Captain Green. Welcome to episode 6 of The Green Pirate, where we'll be talking about compact fluorescent lights. Now, over the last weekend, there was this old wheels festival that we went to, because they were supposed to be giving out compact fluorescents for free. And we were wondering, especially considering our last episode, and our talk about LEDs and how mercury is bad, why they would be giving them out for free. But alas, when we got there, there were no compact fluorescents, and no one was giving them out. So perhaps that is good. In any case, Dr. Alder, please tell us all, what are compact fluorescents? Fluorescent lighting is used in a lot of places, like supermarkets, schools, warehouses, and compact fluorescents are beginning to be used everywhere in place in replace of incandescent bulbs because they use much less electricity. Now, a compact fluorescent in comparison to a regular fluorescent is what's considered instant on. And while that doesn't come on instantaneously like, say, an LED or even an incandescent does, it comes on a lot faster than a regular fluorescent. And these are made to fit into a regular 120 volt socket so that you can replace your incandescent bulbs with compact fluorescent spirals or with compact fluorescent U-tubes that are made to also fit in the 120 volt. Yar. And when it comes to which uses the most energy, be it the compact fluorescent or the incandescent, and how does this affect global warming? At the Alt Wheels Festival, there was a bike that showed you by cycling how much energy it took to light a compact fluorescent versus an incandescent bulb. And what you found is that you needed to do a lot more pumping, a lot more cycling to get the incandescent bulb to light than if you wanted to just light the compact fluorescent bulb. And over here, I've got a breakdown of where the costs come from. So if you want to figure out the kilowatt hours that you spend with a device, first you figure out its wattage. So if you have a 100 watt incandescent bulb, and say you have actually got three of them, and you use them three hours a day, so you've got watts times number of appliances, so you've got three lights that are using 100 watts, three hours a day, 30 days a month, divided by a thousand, because this gives you watt hours, you divide that by a thousand to get kilowatt hours, you get 27 kilowatt hours. So 100 watts times three bulbs times three hours times 30 days divided by a thousand is 27 kilowatt hours. Now if you compare that to a compact fluorescent that uses 23 watts to create the equivalent of 100 watts of an incandescent bulb, then uh, see we've got 23 watts times 3 bulbs times 3 hours times 30 days divided by a thousand and that's 6.2 kilowatt hours. So as you can see 27 kilowatt hours versus 6.2 kilowatt hours you save a lot of energy by using a compact fluorescent over an incandescent. And if you want to take that into money terms, uh, say you're on National Grid. National Grid charges 0.13 cents per kilowatt hour. So 6.2 kilowatt hours, this is again for the compact fluorescent, 6.2 kilowatt hours times 0.13 is 80 cents. Cost you 80 cents to have three of these powered for three hours for 30 days. The 27 kilowatt hours used by three incandescents that are run three hours a day, 30 days a month, costs you $3.51. So $3.51 a month versus 80 cents a month. And now what we're really getting at is uh, how to save the rum. So how much pollution does this cost? How much CO2 emissions does this cost? Well, 
if we're again talking about national grid, national grid creates 0.818 pounds of CO2 per kilowatt hour. So for a compact fluorescent, for the compact fluorescent scenario, that means five pounds of CO2 emissions versus the incandescent, which is 22 pounds of CO2 emissions. So that's five pounds CO2 emissions, 22 pounds of CO2 emissions. Quite a, a difference. Tell us more of this mercury problem. Compact fluorescents contain mercury. Mercury is toxic, so you must be very careful about how you dispose of them. If you contact your city or state that you live in, they should give you information on proper disposal because you do not want it to go into the landfill as it is very, very toxic, dangerous. The average compact fluorescent has four milligrams of mercury in it. Now, you might wonder, well, if it has mercury in it, why would it be recommended versus an incandescent? Well, the thing is that while it's got four milligrams of mercury, the, the emissions from a coal power plant also has mercury. And in fact, an incandescent will cause the equivalent of 10 milligrams of mercury to be emitted into the air versus the four milligrams that would be put into a landfill here or hopefully properly disposed of by contacting your town, city, or state. And, and the emissions, if this was used in a coal power plant, would be 2.4 milligrams. So the total mercury pollution from a compact fluorescent is the equivalent of about 6.4 milligrams versus the total mercury pollution when using a coal power plant from an incandescent, which is 10 milligrams. So if you're using a coal power plant, this actually has more mercury getting into, getting into the environment. Whereas this, which actually has mercury in it, this doesn't have any mercury in it, this does have mercury in it. If you're using a coal power plant, you're actually, uh, you're actually emitting less mercury into the environment. However, if you're not using a coal power plant because you're using solar, or you're using wind, or you're using a green provider, then this probably is worse because you're not causing pollution from your energy, you are in fact causing pollution from your bulb. And it might cost you a little more to to get enough electricity to fuel the incandescent, but the incandescent is going to be less all around pollution because uh, when it goes into, this can go into a landfill, it's glass, uh, there's no mercury, whereas this has mercury and it has to be taken care of very carefully. Be there other downsides? When this might last 30,000 hours, again, an LED bulb would last as much as a million hours. Is that these are fragile. You want to be very careful to make sure that if you use them, you use them in places that children can't get uh, into if, if they break, or that pets can't get into if they break, because they've got glass, just like incandescents, but the compact fluorescents also have mercury, which is toxic. You've got to be very, very careful about where you put them to make sure children and pets do not get a hold of them. Before we end the show today, I just wanted to make a point of saying that while we might be against compact fluorescents in comparison to LEDs, we are in fact for them in comparison to incandescents. If you cannot afford an LED, buy a compact fluorescent. It is better for the rum. It is better for global warming. However, if you can afford the upfront cost of an LED, please, we recommend buy LED solid state lighting.